we're going to be in production hell. Yes. But you didn't expect this kind of production hell, or did you? Um, no, it's worse than I thought. Why is that? Why is it harder? What happened? In 2017, Tesla planned on making 5,000 Model 3s per week by the end of the year. But as December rolled around, Tesla sold an average of 236 Model 3s per week, showing that they were deep in production hell and they needed to find a solution before their financial situation deteriorated. And no, as we don't have Tesla's monthly Model 3 production records, we can only use Model 3 deliveries as a proxy. So with that, Elon lays out new production targets. As for Model 3 production, we continue to make significant progress every day and we're targeting a weekly production rate of 2,500 vehicles by the end of March and 5,000 by the end of Q2. I think that if we can send a roadster to the asteroid belt, we can probably solve Model 3 production. So what is the limiting factor of Model 3 output? Model 3 production is fundamentally uh, the limiting factor on Model 3 output, uh, which is ironic since battery modules really should be the thing we're best at. And I think in part we were probably a little overconfident, a little complacent in thinking that this is something we, we know and understand and put a lot of attention on other things and, and just got too comfortable with our ability to do battery modules as we've been doing that since the start of the company. And of the four zones, two of them, the, the production systems were subcontracted to other companies, flat out didn't work. So we had to do what would normally be an 18-month development cycle for a production system of that scale and complexity and try to do that in six, six to nine months. Uh, we have a design that is nearing completion for a new automated system for Zona 1 and 2 that uh, is being led by a Tesla Grumman team. Uh, it's an excellent design, and we expect a single Tesla Grumman line to be equivalent to three, if not four, of the, like, the current lines that we have, and be smaller. So there you have it. Elon didn't hold back, took responsibility, and got on with fixing the problems that needed to be solved. And speaking of sending a roadster to the asteroid belt. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. And we begin with that stunning launch, a new American rocket built not by NASA, but by billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk. And millions were watching today his $90 million gamble, launching his own rocket. <laughs> the SpaceX Falcon Heavy lifting off into a clear sky, some very unusual cargo inside. Elon Musk's own Tesla sports car carried into space where it is tonight with a dummy there in the driver's seat. That car now speeding toward Mars. You can't make this up. Three rockets attached are supposed to come back down and stick the landing, but would they? Cheers as they pull away from the $90 million vehicle. Successful separation. Those boosters slowing re-entry with another engine firing and a nearly synchronized landing. And the Falcons have landed. As 2018 kicks off, Tesla makes slow and steady progress, delivering 417 Model 3s per week in January and 621 in February. And then we got news that Elon Musk got a major new performance-based compensation package. It is some breaking news this morning uh, that just broke uh, literally overnight. Elon Musk, he's the subject of the column, uh, telling me he's now agreed to stay on as CEO of Tesla for the next decade, a radical new compensation plan. It could be perhaps the most radical compensation plan in history. Com his, Musk's compensation is going to be tied directly to the company's performance. Uh, the executive will receive no guaranteed compensation of any time, of any kind at all. He gets no salary, cash bonus, equity. Uh, he only gets equity that, that vests over time, but only if he reaches uh, these hurdle rates, which are, dare I say, crazy. So right now the company is worth $59 billion. Mm -hmm. They run at $50 billion increments. At each $50 billion number, he collects 1% of the company. If somehow, magically, he would get the company to $650 billion, which is literally what the plan calls for, if you can believe this, uh, he would collect the equivalent of about $55 what if billion gets... dollars in compensation. Otherwise, he gets absolutely okay, nothing. What if he... No, 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 no. It is truly uh, eat what you kill uh, skin in the game. Later in March, Moody's downgrades Tesla's debt credit rating from B3 to B2. Elon wasn't surprised. We, we expected they would probably do something like that because they're um, rating it from the perspective of a debt holder, which they, you know, for, for debt, I mean, the, the way uh, debt is typically looked at is, it's, um, is you look at a company's performance in the rearview mirror. So 
you say, okay, well, what's the historic performance? How many consecutive uh, quarters of profit has Tesla had? Oh, well, uh, none. Uh, so on a, <laughs> on a gap basis. So uh, therefore, uh, you get a bad credit rating. So it's certainly to be expected. So while the credit downgrades made investors nervous, some more bad news surfaced. To the deadly crash, the car on autopilot using advanced technology. A big feature of the Tesla vehicle in question is that it allows drivers to let go of the wheel. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez on what the company says went wrong. Tonight, Tesla confirming this car was in autopilot mode when it crashed in Northern California, killing the driver. Tesla saying the Model X sent Wong several warnings to put his hands on the wheel earlier in the drive, but his hands were not detected on the wheel for six seconds prior to the collision. The car slamming into this barrier. Tesla says this is what it's supposed to look like, but this is what it looked like the day before Wong's deadly crash because of a previous accident. In the following two days of the auto pilot accident and the credit downgrade, Tesla stock fell 15.5%. They are, are, when we use the word collapsed, is that another word for bankrupt? You think, you think that Tesla will declare bankruptcy? Yeah, I, I said in, my, in a note to my clients right. that in the next three to six months, I think the stock's going to uh, crash and that, you know, because of that, they'll be on the verge of bankruptcy because they need the capital markets to survive. They have to raise money. And it saddens me to say that short sellers were right, and Elon soon declared Tesla's bankruptcy. On April Fool's Day, Musk mixed his optimism with dark humor. On social media, in the midst of widespread concerns Tesla might collapse, he tweeted this. We are sad to report that Tesla has gone completely and totally bankrupt. So bankrupt, you can't believe it. You know people are nervous and they're worried. You, you are aware of that. So knowing that, why would you do an April Fool's joke that you did? Oh, because there were all these media articles uh, saying that Tesla's going bankrupt? Yes. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just do an April Fool's joke that we did go bankrupt. But Elon, that's not funny when people are nervous. I mean, it's April Fool's. People should, like, lighten up, okay? Like, it should be pretty obvious, I think, that uh, I'm not going to joke about bankruptcy if I think it's remotely real. We also found out that in March, Tesla increased deliveries to an average of 849 Model 3s per week, indicating that Tesla was still deep in production hell, as they had hoped to be at a production rate of around 2,500 Model 3s produced per week, as Elon earlier forecasted. You said to your team, mm -hmm. everybody get ready to meet the demand. We're gonna be in production hell. Yes. But you didn't expect this kind of production hell, or did you? Um, no, it's worse than I thought. Why is that? Why is it harder? What happened? We got complacent about some of the things that we felt were our core technology. We put too much new technology into the Model 3 all at once. Mm -hmm. That this, this, this should have been staged. High tech goes in the cars, but it also builds them. This is widely regarded as one of the most robotics-driven auto assembly lines on the planet. Elon, part of the thing I heard about the Model 3 is that there's too many robots. That maybe yeah, yeah, I agree. You, do, you think so too? That yeah. maybe you need more people in here working? We do. In some cases, the robots actually slow the production, right? Yes, they did. We had this crazy complex uh, network of conveyor belts, and it was not working. One example of the over-automation was Flufferbot. We, we did go too far on the automation front and automated some pretty silly things. One example would be we had these fiberglass mats on the top of the battery pack. They're basically like fiber, like they're basically fluff. So we try to automate the placement and bonding of fluff to the top of the battery pack, which is ridiculous. Like so, we had, so we had Flufferbot, which was really an incredibly difficult machine to make work. Machines are not good at picking up pieces of fluff. <laughs> human hands are way better at doing that. So we actually had a part that was unnecessary that uh, was for which the line kept breaking down because Flufferbot would frequently just <laughs> fail to pick up the fluff or put it in like a random location. So, so that, was, um, that was one of the silliest things I found. Musk personally took over the Model 3 production line at the beginning of April. He says he has resorted to pulling all-nighters at the plant. When things get really intense, I don't have time to go home and shower and change, so I just sleep here. I want to see. Where is that? Oh, uh, yeah, so this comes from. I mean, it's pretty boring overall, really. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's actually cold in here, too. Yeah, I like it cold. So you have a, 
You like it cold? I sleep on the couch over there. So you're just laying here yeah. on the couch? Yeah. Last time I was here, I actually slept literally on the floor because the couch was too narrow. Yeah, I was going to say. And Elon, I have to say, it's not even a comfortable couch either. No, it's terrible. <laughs> this is a, not a good couch. What does the number say for the last seven days? What is the number? 2071. You pleased with that? Yeah. For the time being? Yeah. Musk feels like all the overtime is paying off. And now he says the Model 3 line is back on track. So while Tesla looks to address over automation at General Assembly, Tesla did manage to solve their production issues for battery pack production at Giga Nevada. The thing I'm most excited about is the uh, rapid increase in output. We've got uh, just in the last 24 hours at the Giga Factory managed to achieve a sustained rate of over 3,000 packs per week. And during the Q1 conference call, Elon's patience for boring, boneheaded questions was running thin as he was working 120 hour weeks and was severely sleep deprived. And so, where specifically will you be in terms of uh, your, your capital next. requirement? Next. Boring, boneheaded questions are not cool. Next. What, how, what percentage have actually taken um, steps to configure? We're going to go to YouTube. Sorry. These, these questions are so dry, <laughs> they're killing me. Thank you. Our next question is from Galileo Russell with HyperChange. You could give us an update on the Tesla network and any details surrounding the launch date or geographic rollout. So thank you for an interesting question. So unlike the Wall Street analysts that were asking questions that were already covered in the shareholder letter, Galileo Russell did the complete opposite and asked multiple questions about Tesla's long-term plans and the thinking behind them. The tone of the interview changed instantly seems that a lot of people are speculating that specs for the semi-truck, even I believe the CEO of Daimler said it breaks the laws of physics. So I'm wondering, huh. is this just a linear... He doesn't know much about physics. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to engage in a physics discussion with him. I actually um, studied physics in college. <laughs> um, so I'm also wondering, are you guys going to let Porsche beat you to market with a 350 kilowatt hour supercharger? Because I know you've mentioned, well, I, I, you know, I, I, E3. Well, keep going into the questions are not boring. <laughs> so yeah, I can keep going. So. Yeah, um, it's cool. Yeah, so the, the These are very 350 much kilowatt. After asking multiple questions, and then some, the moderator tried to step in and bring back the analysts, to which Elon politely declined. Thank you. Our here. next. We'll keep going until the questions are not are, are still while they're, while they're interesting. Yeah, I have a I have a couple more. Um, for the superchargers, I know you guys are not trying to profit off of Tesla. And after asking ten questions, Galileo was done in a huge win for retail shareholders. Awesome! Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate the time. Keep up the awesome work. Very welcome. Thanks for the great okay. questions. As expected. The media had nothing but kind words for Elon following the call. Take it a step further. He was kind of an ass on the call, frankly. <laughs> uh, you know, these analysts are trying to do a job, and these are valid questions. If you're a credit analyst or a bondholder, you'd like to know how bad is the cash burn. You know, this kind of bravado that he exhibited, it works right up until the time the last check bounces. These are important concerns. If you're an equity holder in this company, you want to know is there going to be another equity raise and you're going to be diluted once again. So I, I was appalled by it. Elon didn't waste time in firing back. The dry questions um, were not asked by investors, but rather, he says, by two sell-side analysts who were trying to justify their Tesla short thesis. And what was considered a surprise? Elon even got some support. This was the best call I've heard in a long time. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. First, everyone wants to cut off Tony Saganegi. He is Mr. Negative. So he went negative. Elon Musk had had it. I like that. Secondly, how about this, Jim? Um, we have no interest in satisfying the desires of day traders. I couldn't care less. Please sell our stock. Don't buy it. How good is that? That is the truth. I mean, if I, if I were Elon Musk, I would have done the exact same thing. As May went on, things got worse as reports came out that the NTSB was investigating a Tesla crash and fire that killed two Florida teens. Then... Tesla made front page news again when a 28 year old driver traveling at 60 miles an hour broke her foot when she went through a red light and crashed into a fire truck in Utah all while being on her phone and not paying attention to the road. Unhappy with the media attention, Elon tweeted, it's super messed up that a Tesla car crash resulting in a broken ankle 
is front page news. And the 40,000 people who died in US auto accidents alone in the past year get almost no coverage, as it took aim at the Washington Post in particular. But Musk didn't stop there, and went on to point out that what's actually amazing about this accident is that a Model S hit a fire truck at 60 miles an hour, and the driver only broke an ankle, an impact at this speed usually results in severe injury or death. Also in May, Nikola Motors sues Tesla for $2 billion over an alleged design patent infringement, referring to the wraparound windshield to which Elon responded. I remember this like laughable lawsuit recently from some company ironically called Nikola. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Nikola is suing, suing Tesla, that's hilarious. Fate loves irony. But they're like suing us because the, the way the trucks look, which is absurd. Uh, nobody's buying a semi-truck because of the way it looks or because it's got like a wraparound windshield or whatever, please. Following the drama and attacks, we find out that Tesla delivered 861 Model 3s per week in April and 1,388 in the month of May. And remember, these were deliveries, not production numbers, which would have been slightly higher due to the lag time of producing a Model 3 and delivering it to a customer. But one thing was for sure, if Tesla wanted to get to a production run rate of 5,000 Model 3s per week, they were going to have to do something dramatic in the month of June, and that's exactly what they did. Tesla raising some eyebrows again, but this time it is because of a huge tent built outside of the company's factory in Fremont. Now, the electric car company CEO Elon Musk tweeted saying needed another general assembly line to reach 5,000 a week Model 3 production. A new building was impossible, so we built a giant tent in two weeks. So yes, it is safe to assume a giant tent now houses the new general assembly line for the Model 3. Veterans of the auto industries, of the auto industry, mm -hmm. They're having a field day with it, saying that's not how you sustain production. Elon, on the other hand, didn't share their views. I feel like I'm fun about tent, but by the way, our tent is amazing. And this is not like, you know, so they're telling you buy an REI or something like that, you know, they go camping. This is, a, this is a tent that is actually commonly used as a permanent structure. And we just had to come up with a creative solution because GA3 was not going to be able to make the rate. We had two weeks to solve this problem, which is like quasi impossible. Yeah. Um, so we, we actually didn't have time to order new equipment because it would have taken too long to arrive. So we, we, we took the conveyors that, that we'd uh, discarded from the GA3 line, which didn't work. We're putting them on the 1% grade. Yeah. So the, the, it's like technically the, the conveyors for parts delivery to GA3 were not graded to be able to uh, move something as heavy as a car. So we made it downhill and on a 1% downward grade with the car at the top. So then it, you can actually overcome the gravity. With Newton on your side, you can do, accomplish a lot. So this may be a model of how we may, may want to start uh, general assembly uh, for future uh, vehicles. It's already at an efficiency level greater than GA3, which is pretty impressive. So what impact did the new general assembly line have on Model 3 production? The answer? Tesla does the impossible again. Finally, right, uh, Tesla CEO Elon Musk says the company managed to meet a self-imposed deadline to produce 5,000 Model 3 cars in a week. Musk tweeting out this, 7,000 cars, seven days, and a little heart emoji, Tesla team. Ford wasted no time uh, in terms of responding to Elon <laughs> Musk, right? Not just Ford, the CEO, Stephen Armstrong, tweeting this, 7,000 cars, four hours, heart emoji, Ford, heart emoji. So Tesla was under serious pressure by investors to deliver on this Model 3 sedan. Musk seems confident that the company can keep up the momentum. And in a letter to employees, Musk wrote this. With a widespread productivity gains throughout Tesla and the new production line spooling up, we're on track to reach 6,000 a week for Model 3 next month. I think we just became a real car company. Now, to meet that goal, the company went to extraordinary lengths setting up a third general assembly line under a tent outside the Fremont, California plant. Musk, meanwhile, slept on the factory floor. The work wasn't completed until early Sunday morning. Tesla workers posting photos as the sun rose. Car leasing company Accelerate Auto posting this picture on Instagram. Take a look. Of the Tesla employees all signing a banner that says Model 3 5K Club. So while Tesla breaks out of production hell, there was no time to celebrate as Elon would call 2018 as one of the most painful years of his life, and you will see why in part two, as the story and drama continues. 
If you enjoyed the episode and want to help the channel, please consider supporting on Patreon so I can keep on making more videos for you guys. And remember, all content is for educational and entertainment purposes and not financial advice. So till next time, I'll catch you guys soon.